Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is the first of a series of four videos on explaining normalization. Normalization is a way to actually find out how a database should be organized. A good way to understand what the problem is, is to think about it like this. If you are looking at a place, an organization, top down, you're going to see something that is very organized. But if you look at it from the experience of people who are involved in it, the same information seen bottom up requires you to think about it differently. And normalization is made to help you with that. We work one attribute at a time from information obtained from seeing what happens when people use it. And if you take two attributes, we try to, to find out how they depend on each other. That is, if given the first one, you have only one corresponding value of the second, then we say that the first determines the second. Or sometimes the other way around, we say the second is dependent on the first. Say it like this. It might sound a little confusing, but in practice, you'll very quickly understand. It will give us the best set of tables. I can't guarantee no pain. Here's an example. And the next few videos, I want to use the same example several times using each time a different technique. The first technique we'll look at is looking for determinants. So here is my data. And looking at this data, I can see that certain attributes relate to each other. For example, the student number. Clearly, it's the determinant for the student name. Given a student number, there's only one possible name. And a few other ones are like that. The course number determines the course title. And it appears from this data that the course number determines the teacher. For one course, there's only one corresponding teacher. Here's a case where you have the same course with the same course number and the same teacher. So we'll say the course number determines the teacher. If we were in doubt, we would ask people who use this data to confirm this. Or we could also get more samples of data. Then from this data as well, I can see that the teacher determines the room. Mm, here's the same teacher appearing multiple times. And each time it's the same teacher, it's the same room. Even if that teacher teaches different things. So the teacher, it appears, determines the room. Right, we found almost every attribute, although, um, what do I do about grade? Grade is a bit more complicated because it is the grade of a person on the course. I can see here it's tidied up by student number and the student takes two courses, but this is the grade of this student on this course. So those three are related to each other. And what we can do is we can group these two attributes together. And together, they determine the grade. We say that we have a compound determinant or a composite determinant. So you need both student number and course number. And together, they determine the grade. If you know the student number and the course number, there's only one grade that can go with that. Okay, now I take all of my data again and all those relationships between the data again and I rewrite it in a neater way to be able to see where we are. So the student number determines the student's name and the course number determines title and teacher. Title and teacher. The teacher's name determines the room. There it is. And we have all of our attributes 
in a single diagram, sometimes this diagram is called a determinant diagram because it shows every determinant, every attribute from our data and every determinant. From there, it's not going to be difficult to find out every table and all our primary and our foreign keys. What tables have we got? Well, the easiest thing to do is to actually say each time you have the starting point of an arrow, you have a separate table with that starting point being a fu the future primary key. Every determinant, everything that determines other attributes, is a primary key. So the teacher's name determines the teacher's room. What else have we got? The student's number determines the student's name. So we've disentangled this out of here and put it over there. The course number determines its title and name. Sorry, its title and the teacher's name. And finally, the combination of course number and student number are needed to determine the grade. That looks like we are going to have four separate tables and we have the primary key of each since we know that the starting point of these arrows are going to be our primary keys. Uh, exactly what keys? Well, let's see one bit at a time. So if you take the course number, for example, the course number is the primary key for those two but it's repeated over there and so what we have is this is the primary key in this table but at the same time it's the foreign key in the other one if you see this information twice then that means one of them is the primary key and the other one is being used as a cross-reference so it's a foreign key student number is the same thing it's the primary key in this table and it's the foreign key in this one. What about teacher's name? The teacher's name is the primary key in this table and the foreign key in the other one. Finally, the primary key of this table here, it's the combination of student number and course number. It's a composite determinant. It will be a composite key. Is that it? Almost, we can now draw the table in entity relationship diagram form. So, I replace student with a student table. The teacher's data is a teacher table. The course data is a course table. Ah, I've got the teacher's name foreign key here. So I know my relationship between those two, teacher name, teacher name, the foreign key is the many end of the relationship. I think I'm going to give it a once over reading this to see that it's not stupid. Each teacher teaches multiple courses. Each course is taught by a single teacher. If you doubt that each course is taught by a single teacher, remember we found out that the course determines the teacher, the course number determines the teacher from the data. And if really you were in doubt, you would look at more data or you would ask the people who provided it. Then we have the grade replaced with those two with our compound key and those two are foreign keys which gives us the two relationships student to grade. Each student gets many grade on courses. Each grade on a course is for a single student on a single course. Each course has got many grades for it, for the many students that take it. And now that we see it this way, you can think of grade as a link table. Each student takes many courses. Each course is taken by many students. And the grade records information about which grade students are taking on which course, but also which student is registered on which course. We have our model and we have used this determinant technique to arrive at it. That is it. 
I hope you have found this determinants technique useful. I hope that this video makes it clear. Do put questions in comments and this is worth practicing as well.